Oh, you got mommy lipstick on you. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you are new here, my name is Lauren and this is my daughter. Her name is Everly and she just turned one. Yay! So today's video is going to be all about an update of how Everly is doing and an update on all of our new favorite products as having a one-year-old, her favorite products, my favorite products as a mom. And if that is something that you are interested in, please just keep watching. So I think Everly is going to be kind of in and out of this video. She's just going to be up when she wants me and playing down when she doesn't want me, I guess. And she is going to be playing with toys. So if you hear her talking and whatnot throughout the video, please just know she's happy and she's playing with the toys on the floor. So for all of her updates, I'm going to start and kind of work my way through some categories. And the very first category that I'm going to start with is food and nursing. So she is a breastfed baby. All of her food source and her calories are primarily still coming from breast milk. And so she's still nursing a ton throughout the day and still throughout the night. She does do some food. We're kind of doing some baby led weaning. And so every, basically that means everything that we eat, I just chop up into little pieces and give it to her. I used to make homemade baby food and it's just so much easier to just to chop up what you're eating and let her try and it works out perfectly fine you know we've never had any issue with choking or anything I know that's a big concern that moms have and obviously I still worry about that too but she's done really great with that and she just tries what we have and she really enjoys it she loves to play with food she gets so messy like if any time that I give her any sort of pudding or yogurt or something like that it gets all over the place and she has so much fun with it it's so funny but it also, it's not fun to clean up. But it's so funny and she has so much fun with it. So for naps, she naps about one time a day. She's made the transition to pretty much only napping once during the day. And that is about right after lunchtime-ish. If she would nap more than just the one time a day, she typically will not go to bed until like 11.30. So because of that, we really, really, really try and get her to only nap once and not later in the day. I really try and get her to nap like around 12:31 ish kind of that right after lunchtime area. That's when I really try and nap her. And it just depends on the day. Some days she'll sleep an hour. Some days she'll sleep two hours. Some days it's like 45 minutes. It really, really just depends on the day. Ever since she was really little, I have always, always just held her for sleeping and whatnot. And I know for some moms that might be like a no-no area, but we love our snuggles in this house and we're always snuggling and holding our sweet girl and that's just how it is in this home. And so she has been napping more and more in the crib. Now she doesn't do it every single day, but most of the time I do try and lay her down. And that has actually been going pretty well. Um, at first, it was definitely a bit of a transition to be able to lay her down. And there's still some issues where sometimes you'll lay her down and it's just, nope, she's not going to lay down. But for the most part, she does do pretty good at nap time to lay her down and have her fall asleep. And she just does a really great job with that. Now for sleeping at night time. So I am a little anxious to say this online because I feel like it's such a controversy topic. But... We do co-sleep in our home, and we have ever since she was a newborn baby, just because I feel like with having a breastfed baby, it's so, so much easier, and it's just throughout the night, I'll just nurse her, and she falls right to sleep, and I'll fall asleep, and it's, it's just what worked the absolute best for us, and I say, whatever works for you and your family, great, you do that, as long as everyone's being safe, you know, that's perfect for you, and I'll do what works best for me and my family, as long as we're being safe, and so... She does a great job um, with co-sleeping. We have been starting ever since she was about hmm, like 10, 11 months, I believe. We've been starting to start her out at nighttime in her own crib here in her bed. And it's she's yet to make a, a full night in her crib. And I'm wondering if maybe once breastfeeding is completely done, if that will help her. But um, she just starts out in the night in the crib and she'll normally make it a few hours it just depends she typically will try and nurse one more time and then fall asleep for the night and she'll make it till about like 2 30 3 30 in between there um and then she'll end up back in our bed for a few hours and then i like to actually move her back into the crib in the very early morning at like five that way i can get up and start getting ready for the day so it just kind of depends on the day but she still mostly ends up in our bed like like i said she hasn't spent one full night in the crib yet 
but it still works out really great and it's nice because uh, if she does nurse through the night, I don't know how some moms can get up and just sit up and feed their baby. I'm like, no, no, no. We will nurse and then just fall right back to sleep. So that's just what we do in our home. So specifically talking about breastfeeding and nursing, she's been exclusively breastfed, like I said, her whole entire life. And now we've been introducing solids. You know, she's had some solids from about probably eight, nine months and on, and it's just increasing and increasing. We're doing baby led weaning, like I said, and she's done a great job here. Soon, we are going to be working on weaning from breastfeeding, and I'm wondering if that will help with her sleeping more through the night once that is weaned off, which it makes me so sad to think about just because my baby is big. <laughs> it's crazy. We have plenty of milk in the freezer because I had an oversupply, so we have plenty 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 of milk that we can do breast milk in the bottle i want to give her as much breast milk as i can and even though now she can start whole milk and things like that i haven't really been ready to give her whole milk and so i think that it might make the transition easier to whole milk because we have so much breast milk stored up that i can slowly mix the two together and she can have like half breast milk half whole milk until she finally gets to the full transition of just whole milk as for teething and teeth she does not have any teeth yet. She has not um, had any teeth pop through. She does have two little bumps on the bottom of her gums that she's had for quite a few months now that I, that Matt and I both kept saying that she is going to be getting these teeth soon. She's going to be getting them, going to be getting them, and they have yet to pop through. And so that's actually been really nice for the breastfeeding side of it because we've made it a whole entire year of nursing without any teeth and having to deal with that. So that made breastfeeding a little bit easier. And so she has not had any teeth. She's been a little fussy lately. And like I said, those two little bumps are still there. And so I wouldn't be surprised if teeth pop through, but I'm saying that for quite a few months now and there's not been any teeth popping through yet. So I don't know when they're gonna be coming through, but I'm assuming probably soon. <laughs> Baby girl is walking, walking. She started taking steps a few months ago and we thought that she was going to be walking really early actually but then she just didn't walk and didn't walk and she was just kind of standing up and she would hold your fingers to walk but she did not want to walk on her own even though we knew she could do it she just did not want to and she just wasn't ready and so we all along thought oh she's going to be walking before she's one she's going to be walking before she's one and then once that started happening you know getting one got closer and closer and we're like maybe you know she's not going to be walking when she's one which would be perfectly fine i'm not saying that it would be bad if she wasn't walking but we just thought all along that she was and then we were like well maybe she's not going to but then a few weeks before she turned one she was off on it and she was going and she was she's a walking maniac now oh my gosh it's so cute to just watch her walk through the little house and see her little feet move it's the cutest thing ever and it's so sweet she just will run along and you know, she is to the point now where if she falls down, she stands herself back up, she walks all over the place, she walks in the grass, in the home, everywhere, she's a climber, oh my word, she climbs everything. We have a little swing set place that outside and it has a rock wall. The girl climbs the whole entire rock wall by herself. It's honestly terrifying, but she does it. It's crazy. So now let's talk about her personality. So she is the cutest, the funkiest, the sassiest, and sweetest little girl I know. I have never, ever, ever seen a baby make as many facial expressions as Everly does. It's insane. She always makes these like grumpy eyes and then she makes these super smiley faces and she just makes all of the faces you possibly could ever see on a baby. It's so funny and it's so stinking cute and it's just... <sighs> I just, I did not know that a baby could make that many facial expressions. It's so funny and cute. And then she also gets super duper duper spunky. She will get so excited and start like yelling and making all these funny noises. And she's just, she definitely has a bold personality. And I'm going to be curious to see if that stays with her throughout her whole life. Because obviously she's one and who knows. But it's just so cute and it's so funny to see her little spunky personality self come out. And I think it's so sweet to see her baby, you know, go from being a little teeny tiny baby to having their own spunk and their own personality and seeing, you know, what type of a person they are at that age. And it's just so fun to watch her grow. It's so bittersweet because obviously 
my baby is not a baby. My baby is becoming a toddler. And that makes me so sad that my baby is big. But it's also so fun and so exciting to see all these new things and see her get excited about these new things and see her personality come through. It's just so fun. So next we're going to talk about more of how she does with stranger danger and things like that. She is very, 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 very much a mommy's girl, and I love that she loves her mommy, but she is very, very, very much a mommy's girl. Anytime that we go places, if there's a stranger, you know, that says hi to her or things like that, she normally will kind of like lay her head on my chest and get all snuggly. Now, that doesn't mean that she won't warm up to people and be excited to see other people. I'm like, she gets excited to see my mother-in-law and my mom and, she, you know, my husband, obviously. But she definitely is a mommy's girl. She definitely, definitely is a mommy's girl. Anytime she gets tired or is getting fussy or, you know, falls and gets hurt or anything like that, she always wants her mommy. And I think a lot of that is because not only is she a breastfed baby, but I'm a stay-at-home mama. And so literally mommy is with her almost 24-7, seven, seven days a week. Now, whenever we take her into the nursery at church, she has a very, very hard time. The drop-off is very, very hard. And it's very, very hard for me personally because it's really hard to drop your baby off and see her be upset and crying and clinging to you and not wanting to go. But then she really, really has so much fun. It's just the first few minutes of dropping off and mom leaving. And then once she's in there, she's happy. And, you know, they say she doesn't cry the whole entire time now. She's happy. She plays with her friends. And I don't know. I think that she just has lots of fun, but it's just the drop off. The initial drop off is hard because she is a mommy's girl. So now I think I've updated you on everything Everly wise, you know, personality and things like that. I think I've updated everything. Now I want to share some of our favorite products. So we obviously have a whole array of favorite products, but I just wanted to narrow it down to just a very, very few. I didn't even include any of like her favorite toys in this just because, you know, toys differ from child to child. And I wanted to kind of share things that Everly loves that I think that your one-year-old would also love or that you as a mom would love to have for your one-year-old. So the very first thing that I'm going to talk about, oh my word, if you are a mama who has long nails or if you have any sort of arthritis or, you know, problems with your hands, this could go for grandmas too. Anything like that, you need this bad boy right here. This is the little car seat clip and it undoes the car seat the little red buckle down at the bottom it undoes it because whenever I push into it it my nails I have yet to actually break a nail from doing that but like it would get jammed and it would just hurt and so I use this little bad boy you just slide it right onto the car seat and you push it down and it unlocks it it's so easy to use I just keep it right here on my keys that way it's easily accessible every time I'm in the car I can use it with her and I 100% would recommend this to you like I said if you have long nails or if you have any sort of arthritis or carpal tunnel or any sort of hand pain, this could really, really come in handy for you. And it's so nice. It's so affordable. I just got it off of Amazon. I will be sure for all of these products to put a link down below. That way you can purchase any of these things. I just would strongly recommend this if this is something that you are interested in because it's so easy to use and it's just so handy to have. Next, I want to talk about our changing pad. So we got our changing pad as a gift from our baby shower, and it is one that is a bit more pricey than what you would think to pay for a changing pad, but it is life-changing. I believe that there may be some dupes for it as well, so definitely do a little bit of research if this is something that you're interested in, but it is so, 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 so handy. It's so easy to clean, and now I would probably suggest this more for younger babies just because of this simple reason. So when Evie was first born, she used to have, you know, accidents while we're changing her diaper. So her diaper would be off and she would go to the bathroom while we're in between changing her. And if that would happen on those ones that have like the fuzzy cloth thing, you would have to clean off the fuzzy cloth and spray it down, wash it and everything in between each diaper change. Like for a while, it was almost every single diaper there was an accident happening. But this changing pad specifically, you can just wipe it down, spray it and it's done. It's so easy and convenient to use. I use it on my two-year-old sister and she fits perfectly in it. It's amazing. You can travel with it. It has a little buckle that you can attach to it so you can buckle kids in, you know, so they're safe and not going to fling off or anything like that. It's so easy and it's very heavy duty and it's good quality. I just, if it's something that you're interested in, if you are interested in spending the money, check it out because it's really really good next is the hatch baby noise machine so our evie loves her noise machine and because she co-sleeps 
you know, a decent amount of the time, and then part of the time she's in her own crib. When she is co-sleeping with us, I have to have white noise. So I always have a fan going, the air conditioner going. I always have to have something going so that way I have that white noise. And then when she's in here, it's like pure quiet when she's super used to the white noise from sleeping with mom and dad. And so I we got the little hatch baby machine from Christmas as a Christmas gift for her, and it has been amazing. I mean, it works so well. I use it on nap for my sister. I use it for Evie, for nap, for nighttime, for anything like that. It's so nice. It has tons of different options. You have an app. You can go in and like set it to do certain settings of turn on at this point and turn off at that point. I've even seen some people use it for when their toddlers are older and getting out of bed. They make it set the color of the hatch baby machine they make it set to like green at the time when they're allowed to get out of bed and red when they're not allowed to get out of bed so it's very handy and i absolutely love it and recommend it loves 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 to play outside and we have one of those cozy coop cars fun fact i told myself when i was younger my kids would never ever play with one because when i was younger i fell out of one and had to get i don't know if you can even see but i had to get i had to get stitches in my chin and that was kind of a traumatic experience and I was like, my kids are never going to have one of those cozy coop cars. They are the worst thing ever. And guess what everybody's absolute favorite toy is? The cozy coop car. And it's fine. You know, I just obviously watch her carefully when she's in it. But she loves to go in it. She loves to get herself into it. She loves to honk the little horn and she loves to be pushed around in the yard. It's just, it's seriously her favorite, favorite toy outside. I did mention that we are co-sleeping and so another way to be able to do safe co-sleeping is I do not want her to roll off of the bed and so we purchased a bed railing and it's kind of nice because it can be really long and it can be also short and pretty short and I'm using it on our bed now and then once she gets you know big enough that she has her own toddler size bed we can move it from our bed and put it on there so she can't roll out of there so it's very multi-purpose and it's just it's a sense of security and even when she's playing in our bed, it's just very nice so that way I know she's not going to roll off of the bed, you know? I mean, obviously you still want to keep your eye on her. I'm not going to put her on her bed and run away. But I definitely would say if you are co-sleeping, it is an amazing, amazing thing to have just so that way your baby is not going to roll off the bed. You have a little bit more of that security and it's just very helpful. I did say that I wasn't going to mention any toys and I know I just mentioned the car and now I'm going to mention one other toy, toy thing. But these are the only toy options that I'm going to be mentioning other than I'm not going to go into specific little tiny toys that she likes to play with. But our bookshelf and books have been a great, great thing to have. And so it was not even that expensive and it was a gift to us as well from the baby shower. But she loves looking at books and we have this little station out in our kitchen. We have like our bookshelf and we have a few other toys on the fridge. And she just loves playing there and hanging out in that little spot. And it's so nice to have that little area where she can play with those things. And it's kind of educational, even though she doesn't know what she's doing when she's reading books. But it's kind of educational. She can sit there and flip through books and play with them while I have to do the dishes or while I'm cooking supper. It's very, very beneficial. And I just like the fact that it's somewhat educational for her and it's just good for her to be able to have. She loves being able to get books out of the bookshelf and it's just so fun. She absolutely loves turning pages whenever you're reading books to her. It's the cutest thing ever. She loves her books and her bookshelf. It was a great investment. I would strongly suggest it if your kids love books or if you want to just have a little reading station to be able to keep all your books organized. It's really, really nice. So the next product that I want to talk to you guys about is for any of my nursing mamas. If you... Oh, you want back down? Yeah. 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 If you are a nursing mama and you do um, want to nurse in public but want to be covered, this is an amazing, amazing product. I have two of these. I have a gray and white striped one and I have like a florally one. I always have one in my diaper bag and I always have one just kind of out and around the house. That way if company comes over, if I don't want to go hide in a room, I can just use these. They are so nice and they come with a little bag so they can be perfectly for fit perfectly for traveling. You just slide it in here and there it is. It's so nice. It covers up completely. You can use them as like a scarf or whatever. I don't know. There's different ways you can wear them, but I mainly use this to nurse with and then to use as the car seat cover when she was in the smaller car seat. This is what I would use as my car seat cover for when it was colder or windy or whatever outside or just to make it dark so she could sleep. This is what I would use for both of those things. This next one um, I discovered because Evie has been sick a few times, especially from after shots. And 
this is one of the products that I didn't want to buy as a mom because I thought that it was gross. But this is so much better than like those nose suction suckers that you get from like the hospital or whatever. Um, this is the Nose Frida and I know it's a really gross concept but I promise you it's not as gross as what you think that it is and it's so helpful and when your baby can't breathe you're kind of willing to do anything to get that snot out of there. <laughs> you're willing to do anything to get that snot out of there and this it just is a really really great tool. So don't be afraid or be grossed out by the concept I promise you it's worth it. For changing on the go or if you're just planning on going on a walk and you just want to be able to have diapers and wipes with you, this product is so, so, so handy. This is the Skip Hop Changer. I used to keep this in my diaper bag and now I just keep it like in my car or right by the door so it's easily accessible. It has a little clip so you can clip it onto your stroller if you're just going on a walk. So it opens up and here is the wipe container that it comes with and um, it's just a little portable wipe container. And then you can put your diapers either in this spot or up here in the little mesh bag. And then it just has the big changing pad to be able to travel with. It comes in different colors and things like that. I just picked this one up at Walmart. And it's so handy, like I said, just for going on a walk or if you're just doing something quick and you know you're not going to need a whole diaper bag, this is just nice to be able to carry or clip on because it's so much smaller than a huge diaper bag. Then I want to talk about snacks. So I got this from my mother-in-law for gifts. Well, Evie got it. And it is just this little container that she keeps her snacks in and I keep it with us all the time. And it has this little, there's kind of crumbs all over the place. It just has this little opening that she can shove her fingers in here and so it's not going to be easily spilled she has to actually work to get the food out of there and it's so nice she really loves it obviously she wants it right now but it's so nice keeps her distracted whenever we're going out and about places so she'll use it whenever we're going grocery shopping or out at a restaurant or anything just so that way she can have a little snack and be able to be distracted and have something to play with as well so she loves to throw bowls and plates and everything, and I just got these, these are suction cup bowls, and I have a suction cup plate. I stick it down to the high chair, and she cannot throw the bowl. Now, that does not stop them from throwing the things in the bowl out, but it stops them from actually being able to throw the bowl. So it definitely helps, and it's kind of great to learn to not throw things, because, you know, she can't, 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 can't throw them, and then eventually... She just learns you're not supposed to throw them. So it's definitely a great learning tool, and I strongly suggest this. So this is a bowl. It came with three different sizes, and then this is the plate that I have. They did not come together, but this is a plate that I have, and it has three different little suction cuppies and has different spots. She loves this plate for, like, lunch, so that way she can have different things on her plate. But also, I love it because she can't throw it. <laughs> it's very, very helpful. That is everything that I have to share with you guys. Those are all of our favorites. That's our update on Little Baby Evie Girl. She is a great, great, great baby, and I am so thankful. <laughs> I am so thankful to be her mommy, and I know Matt is so thankful to be her daddy. We are just so blessed to have her in our lives, and I could go on and on and on about how much I love her and how thankful I am for her, but I know that that can get repetitive and boring, so I'm just going to say it once, and now we're moving on. And I just want to say thank you so very much for watching this video. We appreciate it. We will see you in our next video. I hope that you will subscribe and that you will like this video. Don't forget to turn your notifications on. That way you know when I post. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.